Mario Bros. It's the first actual Mario game in a lot of ways. I mean, when you think about it, Mario Bros was a spin-off game from Donkey Kong. Well, that's a bit of a weird thought, but you never really see anyone talk about this game. Donkey Kong gets a lot of love, Super Mario Bros gets a lot of love, but the original Mario Bros? It's like that awkward middle child is just kind of there you know and i have so many questions is it a good game does it still hold up today will mario repent for his crimes uh, i've got to know and frankly i think there's only one way to find out and that's to play every single version of mario bros ever made don't question my logic uh, trust me it's the only way so buckle up because it's gonna be a bumpy ride First up, we have the original arcade game, released way back in 1983. Now, if you're not familiar with Mario Bros, it's a pretty simple game. Yeah, jump under an enemy, knock him over, and then kick him before they get back up. And that's basically it. I guess this was before Mario learnt that he could just jump on enemies. And it has a surprising amount of skill. See, you can manipulate how the enemies will bounce depending on your timing. It's pretty advanced physics for the time, really. A lot of the game quickly becomes about timing your jumps to maximize efficiency. And you to be quick because this game wants you dead seriously this game is a bleeding tough you can't ever stand still because there's always fireballs spawning in to kill you you can't even take a little break and uh, scratch your nose or something or you're gonna die the game keeps introducing new enemies too each with her own little cutscene doubling as a tutorial you got the crabs that take two hits the flies that can only be hit when they're on the ground and you got the freezes that freezes the platforms and finally you got the icicles perhaps the hardest obstacle of them all these only show up deep into the game so you might never even see them luckily we have the now iconic power block to help us out hit this and it'll knock all the enemies over although you can only use it three times so uh use it sparingly reaching a bonus stage does restore it though and there's quite a few bonus stages too you got a standard one a frozen one and even one with invisible floor it's funny really this game really did introduce a lot of iconic mario elements that we take for granted the pipes the turtles the coins heck even luigi nintendo decision to set this game in the sewers basically completely changed the trajectory of the Mario franchise. Would we even have pipes in Mario today if this game was set in a construction site or something? Probably not. Not to say the game is perfect though. Seems like a lot of games of this time. But jumping, it kind of sucks. You can't change direction once you jump, so you've really got to be careful and plan ahead. I think a lot of the difficulty of the game comes from the limitations of the jump. But once you get used to it, it becomes part of the fun. So yeah, that's Mario Bros. I'm actually shocked how fun this version is. It's just non-stop action. It never lets up. It will probably kick your ass at first. I mean, as early as level 10, the game gets really intense. Especially Especially if you're playing solo. I'd argue this game was probably made with two players in mind, but I mean, my name is The Lonely Goomba, so I'll be tackling these games solo for the most part. So, since it's the original game and the golden standard, I feel like I'm gonna have to give this game a solid 10 out of 10, and it sits at the top of the Mario Bros leaderboard. For now, on to the next game then, releasing the same year as its arcade counterpart. It's the NES version. This is probably the version that you've played. So the game, and it generally plays the same as the arcade one, it feels pretty spot on, which is good. But everything looks a bit, um, small. Like are these turtles anemic or something? And it must be cold down here too, because these fireballs are shriveled up. Outside of that though, it's pretty solid. It has most of the stuff you'd expect. The turtles, the crabs, the freezies, but um, where are the icicles at? Bro, there's no icicles. I mean, what is this? Could the NES not handle the complexity of icicles? I don't know. To be honest, the game does sort of feel like it's struggling. The sprites are just constantly flickering. As soon as a single enemy shows up, it all kicks off. It's a bit odd, as there doesn't seem to be that much going on. 
but it's struggling. There's also a few other missing things like the little cutscenes and some of the bonus stages are missing too. But the main issue with the game is, is that it's incredibly easy. I guess since the NES can't handle it, there's just never really much going on. The levels feel kind of empty at times. It's one of those games where you get bored before you die, so you sort of just end up killing yourself to end it sooner. The difficulty seems to plateau pretty early on. Luckily, there is a game B that somewhat solves this issue, adding way more fireballs and faster enemies. You yeah, wouldn't think much of it, but it does actually improve the experience. Game B comes closer to capturing the chaotic feeling of an arcade game, even if there is still a distinct lack of enemies. It's the ideal way to play the game though if you do play the NES version. So yeah, it's a solid game, saved mostly by Game B, but it's still missing stuff from the original. Like, no icicles. <laughs> nah man, we can't have that. And everything looks a bit crap. I mean, heck, look at the box art. It's just flat out lying. So it's gonna have to be a 7 out of 10, which puts it at number 2 on the leaderboard. Next up, we've got the Atari 2600 version. And, uh, oh boy. Bit of a downgrade here, lads. But looks can be deceiving, so let's give it a fair go. And well, it's actually not that bad. I mean, this is as primitive as it gets, but it does get the basics down. Yeah, there's no physics or there's barely any animation, and the game has a tendency to spawn fireballs right next to you at the start of every level, but still, they tried their best. Not really sure what's going on with the coins, though. Looks more like they just glitched in from another dimension. You know, it's pretty funny, actually, because the instruction book knows they messed up and tries to call them wafers. Yeah, sure, whatever you say, mate. Something else that I'm noticing is that the enemies act really weird. See, there can only be one enemy on each level of a stage at any time. So, if there's another enemy already there, the other one will just turn around. Kind of removes a big chunk of what made the original game fun, but... Uh can't have everything, can we? You can pretty much abuse this aspect to manipulate the enemies to your advantage, though. You never have to worry about a turtle falling on your head again. So, what other enemies are there? Well, you got potatoes, the crabs are back, although now if they reach the pipe at the bottom, they get the health back, which is annoying, and it even has the flies. They're looking kind of cute, but what really surprised me was, the freezies show up. I really did not expect that, and man, they are relentless in this game. It's just a constant stream of them, they literally never stop spawning. It's almost pointless killing them, as they'll just instantly come back. Still, between the freezies and the literal constant barrage of fireballs, it's actually oddly engaging. The only thing missing are the bleeding icicles again. I would say this game was impressive for the time, but it came out the same year as the NES version, so uh, not really. It's good for the Atari 2600, but otherwise, no. It's like a 5 out of 10. On to the next version then, and we're sticking with Atari. But we're on to the more powerful Atari 5200, and it's definitely a visual improvement, as you know probably expect. And the gameplay is much improved too. See, you can time your bumps like the original to control the enemies, and you even got the nice warping animation off the ground. The problem is though, the game has a major slowdown. It's like it didn't work within the limitations of the system. Then the crabs show up and, for some reason, they only have one eye. They look more like aliens than crabs at this point. But it's only when the flies show up that the game completely nosedives. The timing on these buggers seem impossible. Be on the ground, you get a direct hit and uh, nothing happens. Oh, okay then. See, the game quickly becomes all about these bleeding flies. That's it, nothing else matters because your focus is solely on these flies that never seem to die. It just ruins the game. It's so inconsistent. Just when you think you've figured it out, it just suddenly stops working. It's an absolute nightmare. It's a shame really because if it wasn't for that, it would be a really solid port. There's no icicles though. Again, I, I'm starting to think they're never coming back. It's weird because, in theory, this is absolutely better than the previous version, but I've got to be real with you. It's less fun. It's trying too hard to capture the arcade experience, but it's clearly punching above its weight. I actually prefer the simplicity of the 2600 version as it plays well for what it's trying to do. I wanted to like this, but nah, it's almost unplayable, especially as it gets more difficult. I mean, you can barely even control Mario due to the slowdown. And to top it off, the turtles have this right shit-eating grin when they kill you, you cheeky buggers. Just for that, I'm giving this a 3 out of 10. 
Next Game Men, and we're going portable with Mario Bros. Game & Watch. Okay, I, uh, I don't know why this is even called Mario Bros. I mean, it plays nothing like the arcade game. Heck, it has nothing to do with Mario at all, really. The only thing remotely Mario is that they're wearing hats. That's it, but it's called Mario Bros. So I'm gonna cover it anyway. So the aim of the game is to pass these boxes back and forth up the conveyor belt and load them onto this truck. It's all about keeping track of their position and making sure you grab them in time. It's pretty good actually. The only issue really is due to the lack of animation, it can get pretty confusing which direction the boxes are going, but you do get used to it. Your boss is a right dick though. All he does is yell at you, despite the fact you're working your ass off. Just like real life then I guess. They also remade this on the Game Boy with Game & Watch Gallery 3 and for. Although you're making cakes now and everything looks a lot nicer. So it's a good game really, but I'm pretty sure we just called this Mario Bros to cash in on the arcade game. I could have just called it Factory or something, I don't know. I'm not going to put this on the leaderboard because, come on now, I mean it's not really Mario Bros. But it's a solid 8 out of 10 regardless. We're moving on to 1984 now. A year has passed, so perhaps this is when the ports get real good. First up, we have the Commodore 64 version, developed by Atarisoft. This game was never officially released for me since, uh, maybe it was just that bad. But I mean, it's fully completed, so let's find out. And so far, it's pretty solid. It looks good, the turtles are fully sized and healthy looking, the crabs have two eyes, and you can actually hit the flies. That alone puts it above the Atari 5200 version. The freezes are here too, but to the surprise of no one, there's no icicles. I'm starting to think it's a conspiracy. So you might be thinking, hey, this looks pretty good. And you're right, it is pretty good. But there's one issue, one big glaring issue. Mario controls like complete crap. I cannot understate how slippery Mario is. Every single turn is like you're on ice. You're just constantly skidding and there's nothing you could do about it. Even if you try to jump in a different direction, it, it won't work. I don't even know why they're bothered with the freezes in this game. I can't even tell if they make a difference. Seriously, it's like Mario is covered in grease. The entire game just becomes about anticipating every single turn to a ridiculous extent. It's a shame really as it's otherwise really solid. It would be an 8 out of 10 but due to Mario's handling, uh, it's a 6 out of 10. It's still pretty decent though. Talking about unreleased games, we got another one here. This time on the Apple II. Now, if you watched my Donkey Kong video, you know that the Apple II version was absolutely awful. One of the worst versions. So maybe it was for the best, this version was never released. But anyway, let's play it. And I mean, uh, it looks pretty bad and there's a constant 8-bit drilling in your ear. It seriously gives you a headache, but it plays pretty good. I'm kind of shocked. You might not be able to tell just by looking at it, but it seriously controls great. It does seem to suffer from slowdown, but it never seems to affect Mario or his responsiveness. It's strange because looking at it, you might think he's a jerky mess, but trust me, you have complete control at all times, and that's important. It has all the enemies too, and it even has the invisible floor bonus stage, which never seems to show up in the other versions. I don't want to jinx it, but this might be it. This might be the game to finally get the icicles. I just need to get to stage 15 to find out. And it does. It has the icicles. We finally did it. And it was on the Apple II of all versions. I mean, look, I know this looks terrible. I can't do it justice, but it honestly plays really great. And it has everything from the arcade version. I can't believe I'm doing this, but I'm putting this right next to the NES version with a solid 7 out of 10. I'm shocked. The fact we went from one of the worst versions of Donkey Kong to this is kind of amazing. And it didn't even get released. Typical. So anyway, it's around this time things went a bit silent for Mario Bros. We just had two unreleased games and it wasn't until 1987, three years later, that we'd see our next port being on the ZX Spectrum, the iconic British PC that swept the nation. I reckon this might be good. Let's go. And uh, Mario looks like an angry Yorkshire man. Seriously, he looks like he's gonna beat me up for stealing his tea. The thing is though, this is bad, really bad, it's almost unplayable. First up, Mario's momentum is cranked up to 11. Sonic fans eat your hearts out. It just speeds up so much you can barely control him. You run so fast, 
You start phasing through the enemies and they don't even kill you. It's seriously unplayable. On my first attempt, I couldn't even kill a single turtle. Imagine dedicating your life to video games and getting a game over with zero points on Mario Bros. The shame of it all. But that's what we're dealing with here. The fireballs don't seem to follow any logic either. Sometimes they bounce, sometimes they go for the floor. It just does what the heck it feels like. And once the crabs show up, it's all over. The enemies just come out all at once like a fecking armada. There's so many they can't even get down. They're just bumping into each other like idiots. Look at this. Oh, Oh god, here they come! Yes, stand no chance with these controls and the wonky hitboxes. It's just completely over. I spent literal hours playing this and I simply could not get past level 5. I don't know if a fly show up. Heck, there might even be freezies. Maybe even icicles. I couldn't tell you. This game seriously pissed me off. It's that bad. 1 out of 10. I'm just glad I never have to play this ever again. Well, hopefully the Amstrad CPC version bears better. Oh, oh no. Oh dear god, it's the same. Only everything is red and white this time. It's kind of creepy. The floor looks like a spinal cord or something. <sighs> creepy pasta Mario bros. Having said that, I'm not sure what it is, but this version is actually better. The collision is better, I can't randomly run through things, and I can actually get past level 5. I got so far, in fact, that the level started looping. So I can now safely confirm that there are no icicles in this version. However, the freezies and the flies do show up. Mystery solved. But as soon as they show up, the game loops to the start anyway, so you barely even see them. Now, I don't know if grinding away for hours on the last version has just made me better at the game and it's all just a placebo effect, but it did seem a lot better. It was actually playable. See, the trick is to just jump spam into the enemies. Don't time it, don't even try. Just keep jumping and it'll always hit. Pro gamer tips right there. Anyway, don't get me wrong here. Yeah. This is still bad. Mario is still barely controllable, but it's better. A solid, um, 3 out of 10. Now I'm starting to think maybe I was a little bit too harsh on the previous version. But you know what, screw it. I'm going to play it again just to be sure. Nope. It's still a load of crap. Right, so we've played the Commodore 64 version before, but there was actually another version developed by Ocean. And unlike the prior version, this one actually released. So realistically, you think this would be the better version, right? And with a title screen like that, I think we might be onto a winner here. And uh, I think I spoke too soon. This somehow has worse controls than the ZX Spectrum version. How how do I even describe this? In short, Mario doesn't stop running. Press left and he'll just run to the left forever. I let go of the joystick, it doesn't matter, he's still running left. I thought my game was bugged, but no, this is intentional. In order to stop moving, you have to press the opposite direction and then press that direction again to move. It makes controlling this game nearly impossible. I I've never seen anything like it. The simple act of stopping becomes a challenge. Nothing else really matters. Everything else could be great, but these controls are mind-bogglingly bad, so it doesn't matter. It's worse than the angry Yorkshire man for Pete's sake. Ignoring the controls though, and everything else is fine. The collision is good and everything acts how you would expect, until you reach the flies. And yet again, it drops off a cliff. Something I'm noticing more and more with these ports. The problem is they move so freaking fast. They only touch the floor for like a single frame and then they just swarm you. Mixed in with the controls and it is basically over. You ain't getting past these flies. That's as far as anyone gets. Seriously, you have no idea how bad this control is. Luckily, the game does have a level skip cheat, so uh, let's skip ahead a bit. I've got to know if they have the icicles. And no. We got the freezes though. Some reason they never seem to forget about those. It's just bizarre really because the unreleased version was way better than this. Yet this one releases and it's an unplayable piece of garbage. If it controlled well it would be like a 4 out of 10. But I mean I've got to give it a 2. At least it looks decent and it's somewhat playable up to the flies I guess. Which is more than I can say for the Spectrum version. And you do sometimes get this weird, creepy Mario just smiling at you between the levels, so uh, that's gotta be worth at least one extra point, right? Right. Um, moving on. So, 
five years after the original NES game release, Nintendo decided to come back and give it another go with the incredibly obscure game Kaitakita Mario Bros. Not sure what Kaitakita means and googling it only seems to bring up this game so maybe they just made it up. Let's check it out anyway and uh What the hell was that? The game itself and uh, well, this is a massive improvement from the first NES version. <laughs> Just look at the turtles, they've finally been fed. There's no flickering sprites either, it looks and runs perfectly. But perhaps the biggest game changer here and the first for the series is the fact you can change direction mid jump. This completely changes the game. You can like swerve around platforms and all sorts. So far this is really solid, everyone's here and all the bonus stages are present too, it seems like a pretty faithful recreation. And when we reach 100,000 points, we get this little scene. Again, I have no idea what it means but the music's pretty cool. And you might want to sit down for this one, but it even has the icicles, it has it all. And the cherry on top is this weird slot machine when you get a game over. Again. I have no idea what it does, but whatever it does, it's doing it right now. There's actually a few things on the menu. There's another mode, which uh, seems exactly the same, but you don't get the slot machine and we get a different cutscene. I, uh, is this game a commercial? We can also enter our name, date of birth and gender, I think. Not really sure why any of that matters in a NES Mario Bros game, but it's nice, I suppose. And finally, we have this turtle talking to us. I presume he explains what the heck is going on. Seriously though, what is this game? Who is this guy? Why, why is there a slot machine? I'm so confused. Turns out it was a promotional game for a Japanese food company. I mean, obviously. And to top it off, reaching certain scores won your prizes in real life. That's pretty cool. Anyway, back to the game and I mean, it kind of blows the original NES one out of water in a lot of ways, but there is a problem. See, Mario controls so well in this game, too well. It's like the sheer foundation of Mario Bros just collapses because of it. It's hard to explain, but sometimes the limitations within the gameplay is what makes the game fun. Remove that and it doesn't really work. You're just completely overpowered in this game because of it. I actually found it getting boring quicker than I'd like. It just feels like you'll never ever die. Still, I can't deny this is an incredibly polished version of Mario Bros. And the way the jumping is handled does make it stand out from the other versions. It's a double edged sword really. Definitely the most accessible version if nothing else. It's a solid 8 out of 10. If I just bumped the difficulty up or added a game B or something, it would be perfect. So we've had the Atari 2600, we've had the Atari 5200 and now it's time to check out the Atari 7800. The number is higher because that means it's better. That's how these things work right? And well, it's basically a port of the NES version. Not sure why they copy that version and not the original but hey, whatever, it, it works. Not happy to see the anemic turtles again, I mean they look unhealthy. And I'm not really sure what the heck is going on with these flies. But outside of that and a few visual differences, it seems basically the same game. New to this version is the fact it has three difficulty settings. Only not really because all it does is change which level you're starting on, which I suppose is a nice addition. A problem I've mentioned a few times about these ports is that they're really slow to get going. So being able to start on level 7 does help alleviate that a little bit, so I appreciate it. But yeah, there's not really much to say, it's basically a slightly inferior version of the NES game without a game B, but the ability to start on later levels, so I'll give it the same score, a 7 out of 10. Next up, we're going back to the Atari again with the 8-bit family series of computers. And the cutscenes finally return from the arcade game, which is always nice to see. Really, the visuals in general are quite nice. 
the turtles are big, the crabs have a silky smooth animation, and the flies actually look like flies again. The gameplay is solid too, it even captures the intensity of the original arcade game, perhaps more than any version so far. This might be the best port so far to be honest, even more than that weird Japanese food one. It just all comes down to the big old icicles. Will they be in the game? I have a good feeling about this, and yep, it even has the icicles. So, we have good graphics, perfect controls, great intense gameplay, and it's surprisingly accurate to the arcade game. And the cherry on top is, you can yet again change the starting level up to level 9, making it way quicker to jump into the action. What can I say, I I'm trying to find a flaw, but there just isn't any. I guess there's some sprite flickering, but it feels justified due to just how much is going on. So, it's gonna have to be a 10 out of 10, putting it right near the top of the old leaderboard. Well, that was unexpected. And that was the last Mario Bros port for quite some time, ending on a high it seems. But in 1993, five years later, Nintendo had yet another crack at it by releasing an exclusive version of Mario Bros just to Europe. I had no idea this even existed till now, but oh, let's try it out. And alright. It's basically a port of that weird Japanese one, but without any of the outfits or promotional crap. It plays exactly the same, down to the incredibly precise jumping. Which brings the same problem, that the game is mind-numbingly easy. Seriously, it takes like up to level 20 for it to get interesting. However, this game has something the Japanese version didn't. A Game B. And here's the thing. It's amazing! It solves pretty much every issue I had with the original. There's way more fireballs and faster enemies, it just makes a huge difference. It immediately regains that feeling of the arcade original, but now with even more precise and modern controls. You no longer get bored, you're just engaged till you get a game over. The way it should be, Game B elevates this to top tier. In a lot of ways, it could even be considered better than the original. Since Mario controls more as you'd expect, I could see a lot of people preferring this version. It's crazy really how Nintendo keep re-releasing the first NES game despite it being the worst. They've re-released it so many times for Virtual Console, Animal Crossing, for E-Reader, heck even recently on the Switch. Yet they've had arguably the best version of Mario Bros just hidden away this entire time. That is such a Nintendo thing to do. So yeah, it's another 10 out of 10 and it's going right near the top again. That's two in a row. Oh, we're on a roll here. But then things went silent for eight years till the old Game Boy Advance came out. And with it, the grand return of Mario Bros. Ah, oh, man. They really milked this version for all it's worth. It was bundled in with every Mario Advance game and even Mario & Luigi Superstar Saga. They loved this thing, and rightfully so, cause this is amazing. It's basically a completely upgraded version. You can run, you can freely jump, you can charge up a super high jump, you can pick up power blocks, I mean it feels great and it looks great too. It has everything, all the bonus stages, even the invisible one, it's got icicles, the whole shabam. There are a few changes from the original game though. First, there's two pals, one at the bottom and one at the top, which is a bit more awkward to hit. That's where the high jump comes in handy, and getting a perfect score on a bonus stage now gives you an extra life. So, there's more pals, there's more lives, perfect controls again, it, it makes the game kind of easy. You can go on for a long time. Luckily, the difficulty does eventually become intense, but this is a marathon of a Mario Bros game. You'll be playing close to an hour per run. It's not quick. Seriously, you'll get to like level 60 by the end once you get good. But it never stops being fun because it's just a dream to play. So I think it balances out. But yeah, it does take too long to get difficult, like usual. That's not to say it's perfect, because it does have one big issue, which drags the whole thing down. 
the field of view is just too small. You can't see the whole stage at once. This is actually a pretty big problem, as one, icicles can form from the pipes, drop down and kill you, and you can't even see them because they're off screen, and two, you can't see what pipe the enemy walked into at the bottom of the screen, which is needed to know what side it's gonna come out of at the top. There's times when you'll just fall on top of the enemy, which you can't even see. I mean, it's not super common, but it is a problem. Luckily, playing this in multiplayer does solve some of these issues and it adds a layer of communication not seen in the other versions. Someone can deal with the bottom half of the screen and tell you what's going on for instance. And for the first time ever, you can play up to four players. Four players co-op Mario Bros. It's uh, certainly an experience. But that's not all, because this version also has a versus mode. See, instead of working together, you're trying to kill the other player, or be the first to collect five coins. You can even pick the other player up and yeet them into an enemy, it's hilarious. There's also a trash can in the middle of the stage which you can jump into and get a random item, or nothing at all, but it takes a really long time. You can even throw the other player into it and grab other coins whilst they're rummaging around for an item. Heck, even Bowser shows up in this mode. It's great, and again, up to four players. Man, it's, it's hard to rate this because it does have issues, mostly with the screen crunch and the incredibly slow difficulty curve, but it's so good. Yeah, sure, it's not faithful to the original arcade game, but it builds upon it and it allows for some crazy stuff. So yeah, I'm torn on it, but ah, screw it. I'm giving this a 10 out of 10 too. The positives outweigh the issues tenfold. I mean, definitely check this one out. Next version then, and it's on the GBA again. Japan exclusive this time, it's the Famicom miniseries Mario Bros. And it's pretty much just a port of the NES game. They redrew the sprites in order to fit it on a single screen though, which is very much appreciated. Other than that, it's the same. They even kept the excessive sprite flickering, which, I mean, kudos for authenticity I guess, but they probably could have fixed that. Still, it's the same as the NES one, so it gets the same score. A 7 out of 10. Now. Before we get to the final version of Mario Bros, I figured I'd cover some games that didn't quite make it onto the list, but I still want to talk about. First up, we got Mario Bros Special, developed by Hudson and released on a bunch of PCs only in Japan. It's a bit of a bizarre game really. Each level has its own objective, such as reaching the top to hit all the switches, uh, level 2 has you flipping turtles and killing them, Okay, that part kind of is like Mario Bros. And then level 3 has conveyor belts and moving platforms, where you've just got to collect enough money and then pick up this ring. Then you have a bonus stage and that's basically it. Really, the game has more in common with Donkey Kong than Mario Bros, but it's still interesting. A bit of a forgotten relic of the past, really. But that's not all, because Hudson made another Mario Bros game too. Punch Ball Mario Bros. Again released in Japan only. This is much more similar to Mario Bros, only instead of bumping into enemies from underneath, you just yeet a ball into their face. Surprisingly decent, and something I would like to see get re-released one day, although it's not likely. Next up, we've got Mario Clash on the Virtual Boy. Now this is as close to an official sequel to the original Mario Bros you can get really. Now, I'll probably talk about the Virtual Boy more in the future, but if you didn't know, it was basically a 3D system where you put your eyes into these goggle things and everything looked 3D. And by 3D, I mean 2D images layered in 3D basically. But it was a pretty good effect, and even now, it's quite a unique experience. But anyway, the game, and basically you need to jump on a Koopa Trooper, pick up the shell, and throw it at enemies. And most of the enemies can only be defeated by throwing the shell into the background or foreground, and that's basically it. It's really hard to play without the 3D, as lining up the shots relies on a 3D perspective, so uh just use your imagination. So yeah, it is quite similar to Mario Bros in the stage and enemy design, but otherwise it's pretty unique to be honest. I wouldn't say it was particularly amazing though. Anyway, I, I figured I might as well show the Smash Bros stage too. A lot of people dislike the stage, but that's because it's not really designed with standard fighting in mind. You're supposed to play it like Mario Bros. Yeah. You kill the turtles and throw them at your enemies for basically an instant kill. If you play it like that, it's a lot of fun. I mean, it's a gimmick stage but I like it. Then we have a versus mode from Super Mario Bros 3, which is based 
on the original game. And it's not that bad, much like the GBA version, it's a race to get the most coins or kill the other player. It really doesn't last very long though, I mean less than a minute really, but for a little side mode, it's not bad. They even fleshed it out in the All Stars release, adding Cooper Troopers with kickable shells, and you can even take two hits now, which lets you take bigger risk. You can even get mushrooms and everything. This version is actually a ton of fun, it's worth checking out. And now, it's time for the final version of Mario Bros ever released. Oh boy, it's been a long journey. If you stuck around for this long, I appreciate it. But alas, all good things must come to an end. So here it is, of the final game, of the big finale, the big old best Mario Bros game ever made in the history of the universe. Luigi Bros for the Wii U. It's a... Uh, a port of the NES game again, but yeah, play as a Luigi. And uh, yeah, that's it. I guess it's a 7 out of 10. <clears throat> well, that was anticlimactic. And that's it. Every single version of Mario Bros. But we're not quite done yet, because it's time to rank the games in order, from worst to best, in what I'm dubbing the Mario Bros High Score Table. Ah, uh, let's go. In number 16 is the ZX Spectrum. Number 15 is the Commodore 64 Ocean version. Number 14 is the Atari 5200. In number 13 is the Amstrad CPC. At number 12 is the Atari 2600. And at number 11 is the Commodore 64 Atari Soft version. At number 10, well, I can't believe it, it's the Apple II version. At number 9 is the Atari 7800 version. At number 8 is Luigi Bros. At number 7 is the Famicom Miniseries. And at number 6 is the original NES version. Number 5, it's Kaitakita Mario Bros. At number 4 is the Atari 8 bit family. At number 3 is Mario Bros. Classic on the GBA. At number 2 is the European version of Mario Bros. And at number 1, to the surprise of no one, is the original arcade game. And we're done. Thanks for watching, and who knows? Maybe this video inspired you to try out some version of Mario Bros you didn't even know existed till now. Definitely check out the top 3 anyway if you can, so pretty good stuff. Anyways, till next time, bye! And the patron of the week is Ruth Green. Thanks for the support. It really lifted up my spirits. Get it? Um, lift up Crane. Ah, forget it.